trying to run a car here. The broken wing It didn't last a spring You shoved me out Before the nest was cold I couldn't fly But I tried I hit the ground And I was on my own Alone in a big blue land With only my legs to stand And no one to lend a hand Or to pick me up That's what caused the wind again It's the only place you feel it But that's why it was discovered too Because it comes out strong sometimes I've caught many of them with clocks coming out at 60 miles an hour If you can imagine that was exciting. My wife's pigtail was straight out, my hat was coming off, and trying to hold the animal over still. <laughs> and we're grinning because it's really neat to have that come out of a hole in the ground. Actually, away from the cave now. That's because the whole entire tour group just went inside. I left my ticket in the car. It was, pretty said, a preposterous idea. An outrage against South Dakota's Black Hills. What arrogant stone cover could possibly improve upon God's mountain sculpture? My name's Pops. So Kyle Harvey's my real name, a given name. I'm from Kansas, and I'm in this Alpha Omega Motorcycle Club. I know different times people in the church have come up to me and says, you know, according to the Bible, it says when, when you come to the Lord and, and you become a Christian that you're supposed to change. And I tell them, well, I did change. Before I became a Christian, I dressed just like you did, you know, just suit and tie, you know, and like, like everybody else. And after I became a Christian, the Lord decided, you know, I should be a, in, the, in the biker ministry and, and witnessing the outlaw bikers. So then I, I had, had to grow the beard and wear the clothes that they do so that we'd have something in common to work with. A couple of years ago, I was up here at Sturgis and I was doing this wedding and people had called me ahead of time, said they want to do a wedding out to one campground and got out there that evening to do the wedding. And, and I said, well, where are we going to do the wedding at? And he said, well, we're going to be up on stage here. And I said, well, there's, hey, there's a band up there already playing, a band called The Regulators, which I'd never heard of. but good band I guess if you like that kind of music I wasn't really my bag but whatever they like he said well whenever they break well we'll have the wedding so they broke for the an intermission deal and we went out for about 10 minutes and did the wedding and and uh, I wasn't really expecting that I've been on stage in front of probably 25 30,000 people and with the microphone and doing a wedding like that but we got through it, and then after we finished our thing, why well, we went down, and then Molly Hatchet come on and did their thing. They was playing a bunch of music. It's kind of a new thing for me. Most of the weddings I've done been regular campground or down on Main Street or whatever. But it's really been interesting. I really enjoy what I'm doing and trying to serve the Lord. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Pops. We appreciate it. I see the sky where you and I would wait for you so patiently But I was weak And soon I had an empty beat I guess I wasn't worth the time And I never had the chance to Where I
there's nothing. Whoa! It's cold! Woo! Oh, I've left my mark. I have my hand on the uh, left side of the brake. We found ourselves a place to eat. It's right on this creek here. And we're still in Red Lodge, Montana. Placed my order and I uh, got the battery in there. It's being charged. I'm going to step away and try to make a few phone calls home and then come back and eat and pick up the battery. I was inside the red box car talking with the folks inside the, the, the store, the restaurant. They invited me inside and I was talking with them. This is her business card. Her name is Ann Ford. And she's a superintendent and she offered me a job to come out here and teach. A sticky summer's day in Shepherdstown An eagle in a thermal is a circle around Like a tire on a bike rolling down Columbus Street But Katie got a little look of hope in her eyes And her arms unfold as she looked to the skies And said, I'm gonna learn to fly around with you, yeah She jumped up high and she fell on the ground And skinned her little knee and made a horrible sound She got right up and she tried it again And smiling all the way with her unstoppable grin Take time, do what you're gonna do And just smile, you're gonna see it through Your wings are gonna sprout and lift you off the ground No, oh, no, take time, do what you're gonna do Just smile, you're gonna see it through Your wings are gonna sprout and you will learn to fly Tackle, guns, ammo. I wonder how he chose the order of those words. I myself probably would have went alphabetical. It should have been ammo, bait, guns, tackle. Actually, it looks like he tried to make some kind of a word simulation there. Bait, tackle, guns, ammo. But that actually is incorrect because bait is used with tackle but ammo is used with guns, so a correct analogy would be bait, tackle, ammo, gun. Don't know why, but I've always had a desire to come out and see the Great Salt Lake and the Salt Flats of Utah. Um, in the background, right over the roof of the car, you can see Salt Lake City in the distance. And what I've basically done is I found this uh, highway that leads to a small road, which leads to another small road, which leads to a dirt trail, which leads to the beach. And uh, I came right down, you can actually see my tire tracks. 
and I went a little farther, and I started sinking. And I thought, if I got stuck here, how in the world am I going to get out of here? So I actually stopped just to be safe. But uh, as I panned off to the, to the, I don't know which way I'm looking, east I think. Actually, the north I think you can see. Yeah, it's the north. Uh, you can see the Great Salt Lake. It's the basin, the very bottom of the uh, Salt Lake. Okay, here we go. We're going to run out there. We're in the Great Salt Lake right now. Great point. Here we go. There goes Randy. Beautiful day here in Monaga. How's the floating? Water's warm. Don't let the water get in your eyes because it burns. <laughs> and don't have any open cuts. Other than that, it's awesome. It's actually in the middle of nowhere. It's a place called the Bonneville Racetrack. And uh, what's fascinating about this is it's a huge, gigantic racetrack set out here in the Utah Salt Plains, uh, right next to uh, eastern Nevada, and it's the exact place they do a lot of the land speed records. So we just entered the state line in Nevada. We're going to stop off here, grab a bite to eat. This will be about as far west as we're going. Then we're going to head back into Salt Lake City. We're going to look at downtown Salt Lake City. And as we look at this panoramic shot of the city as it works its way up the mountain, I uh, do recall now how far that Bonneville st Speedway was. It took me uh, almost two hours. Oh, that car was coming at me. It took me almost two hours to get back home, but uh, it was definitely worth the trip. I also found it interesting to realize too that when I stopped off in Nevada, that was as far west as I've ever been in my life. And the point that I stopped off at was a gas station to buy some Twizzlers. So that was my record for being west. It's about 12 o'clock midnight. Still haven't found a place to sleep yet tonight. And I'm tired. So to sum it up, Salt Lake City, Bonneville was worth it. Twizzlers, gas station. Haven't found a place to sleep. I'm very tired. Morning, seventh day sleeping place. to get lost. No people, no trails, no compass, no bugs. Oh, this car feels like an oasis. When we last left you, before the battery died out, I almost died out, but I was saying that we had no trails, there were no people, no compasses, I brought no bug spray, no suntan lotion, no maps, no water, and no snake bite kit. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it back. You know, people over here in the southwest always keep telling us that it's not the heat, but the humidity that kills you. I tell you, I've never felt this bad in the Midwest before. I've been halfway into the trip, and I'm out of money. Why do they put Braille on these drive-up ATMs? We are outside the park, but I did find some uh, running water. Largest rack on its head I've ever seen in my life. The thing was amazing. 
a lot of wildlife, all this wildlife that I never thought lived in this area are all appearing now in the evening. But uh, we're going to turn off to the campsite and we're out of here. Well, we almost ended up in the car again. It took a while to find the campsite, but we're here. Bring the last load out right now. Probably the most primitive spot we've slept in. Um, neat thing about this is the, the full moon has gone away and actually the moon's not out at all. And it is just pitch black, dark out here. Um, stars in the trillions. Beautiful night. Perfect temperature. Well, it was perfect here. What a what a difference between the uh, the last few nights that we slept. Comfortable, just shorts and t-shirt, and right on top of the sleeping bag. And there once again was our tent for this eighth day of rest. Good morning from Canyonland. Hi, here we're, we're here with Bob, and this is Bob's truck right here. Bob's from New York. And he's going to show you where he sleeps. Bob, why don't you show us where you uh, have been sleeping the last couple nights? Uh, I sleep in here. <laughs> I take all this stuff out, and I roll out my sleeping bag, and I sleep right in the truck. Just right right in the back of the truck, eh? Yeah, if the weather's bad, I just kind of <laughs> close it up like a coffin. <laughs> that way nobody knows I'm in there, and I can sleep in anybody's backyard. And they wouldn't have any idea where I was. Sounds good. Hey, Bob, what's your favorite power tool? My favorite power tool? I'd have to say the circular saw. Oh, yeah, why did like, you choose? Why did you choose that one? I like the sound when it's really binding into the wood. <laughs> I really enjoy it. Okay, it's sounds like good. Screaming sound, I like that. <laughs> hey, you ready to do some rafting today? I want to do some rafting. All right, we're out of here. All right. Here's how I dry my clothes. Watch this. Check out these shorts. It's from the Salt Lake City. We're back with you. We're down in the uh, valley of the Colorado River. We're heading out to do some rafting. You can see our kayak on the back of Bob's truck ahead of me there. The Colorado River. <laughs> There's a piece of cake. We're ready for more next time. Yeah, we ate that up. Grand Canyon. Next year we're going to catch up with you when we get the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Watch this. Look at this thing. This boat must weigh 300 pounds. <laughs> <One hand>. What? <laughs> Okay, we're back with you. And we're at a place called Arches. night number nine. Oh, I forgot to wish you a good morning. The beautiful banks of the Colorado River. We are uh, currently running into that shower problem again. It's now been uh, a total of three campsites without a shower. And since that time, I have done a lot of hiking, running, exercising, and whitewater rafting, and swimming in the Salt Lake. So as you can imagine, I'm feeling just really good right now. I think we might go for a dip in the river before we depart from this area. As the smell of eggs and bacon drift across your nose, we're going to show you how the real, real outdoorsman makes breakfast. First of all, add water to bowl. The desired amount should cover approximately one third of the bowl. Next, add powdered milk. Also known as Sanilac. Stir in powdered milk. Stop when milk is at desired consistency. 
Next. Select the cereal of your choice. Add cereal to bowl. Serve and enjoy. Now is a quick lesson on how to wash and put away dishes, dishes in the country. Okay, we're out of here. Tomcat, stay close to me Cause there are clouds on the horizon And a chill on the breeze We're alone here But don't you be scared I've got a calloused hand of farmer's tan And I'm happy to share You and I will both get by Just promise you won't stray that I need is some dirt and a seed and I will feed you till the summer blows away Little Tomcat, don't be afraid when there's a stirring in the meadow or a noise in the shade I'll defend you and lead you from harm If you should find yourself in peril I will guard you in my arms You and I will both get by Just promise you won't stray All that I need is some dirt and a seed And I will feed you to Looking at campsite number 12 the car. Welcome to the corn husker state. I've seen people come and depart with everyone. There's a start and there's an end.